Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video on Gran Turismo 7. We're back with a track guide for Suzuka in Group 3 driving on the medium tyres with BOP on. Now this is for the Toyota Cup that is going to be on over the weekend. Unfortunately, I can't do this race. However, I did want to make sure that I gave you some form of track guide just to give you an idea of where you can gain some time, some racing lines and some basic tips with this car. So yeah. Hopefully this can help you out. If it does help you out, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe. Let me know in the comments how you get on because I won't be racing this, but I wanted to make sure obviously that you have some sort of um, reference to push for. Now, my lap is not particularly amazing. Bear that in mind. I've just jumped on. The aim was to get in the 57s. As soon as I got in the 57s, track guide, get it done. So starting your lap, we're going to go over the line, obviously, pushing as hard as we can for it, rev the car out. And just bear in mind that the wind direction can change for this race. So we've got a tailwind slightly here going into turn one. So we're going to have to break slightly earlier. So going into turn one, we're going to be looking for the 50 board. And you're going to see I'm going to break almost dead on that 50 board. And then we're going to trail break all the way through the corner. So keep your eye on the trail breaking as we go through this corner. And we want to try and rotate it into that first apex and then swing it out slightly and then get it into the last apex. So you can see we're going to use the full width for the track and down to third gear quite late and then hog it into this right apex because you want to get your right hand tires close to the curb on the right hand side. And you can see we're on the throttle, ready to put some attack in there. Now back off throttle and then back on again because we're trying to carry as much speed out of this exit as possible. Use this full track width again. Now into this really fast flowing S section and all you're going to do here to throw the car in is just lift off the throttle. Don't brake, lift off the throttle, let the car rotate in fourth gear, get that left hand tire close to the curb, back on the throttle and then as soon as you're pretty much in the middle of the corners here, you're going to put a, light, a tiny bit of braking reference in just to start rotating the car into the right hand corner. Now back on the throttle, now here you're going to swing as much of the, as you can the car from the right hand side to the left hand side. So you're going to see a little bit of a swing going on there. Then then chucking it back into the left and now your aim is to lift off the throttle and get that left hand tire to get as close to this green bit of astro on the left hand side as possible so you really want to get up as much as you can on there and get on the throttle as aggressively as you can to carry the speed through this left hand corner now again you're going to do a very similar thing swinging it into the right hand side so you're going to see again left inputs on the steering wheel then chucking it all the way to the right you can really see it going on my steering wheel inputs and a bit of braking input going again to get that trail braking to get the weight onto the front of the car and to help you hug this curb on the right hand side now you're going to keep playing with the throttle through here until you've got that full grip and again as we've done before we're going to swing it from the right to the left now this corner is extremely important to get that rotation through because the better you do it the more speed you can take through the corner you're going to see i'm going to have to give a little lift off the throttle then back on the throttle and again that left hand tire needs to get as close to that curb as possible and then carry as much exit speed as you physically can out of that corner because it will gain you a lot of time now into the next braking reference we're going to break short of that 50 board now this corner is very tricky on this game you cannot attack the curb too much you're going to see that what i do is a bit wrong i hit the curb a little bit aggressive and that kind of throws me offline slightly then once your car is lined up in a straight line pretty much you're getting on the brakes nice early way before the end of the curb and we're going to rotate into this right apex now you're going to see as we attack here you can actually attack this curb a lot smoother you can get onto the right bit of um, the green astro on the right hand side there and really get on the throttle nice and early. so you can see as soon as we're on the curb we're off the throttle on the brake then back onto that throttle as we're exiting it and carrying the speed using some of the full width for the track there and now working our way into this hairpin. Now there is a trick to go in a little bit faster here. I found if you use first gear, you can really gain some time, but we're gonna break at the end of the curb again. Now on this go, I decided to do it in just second gear just for consistency. So we're going on the brakes there nice and early and we're gonna rotate this car in. Now you're gonna see, staying to the right hand side, then rotating it because you wanna square this corner off. Now you can use first gear around about this point and then back into second gear to get this weird rotation on this car and it can actually gain you quite a bit. However, I did that in second gear just for consistency, just because I wanted to get this lap in and make sure that we get in the 57s for this guide. Now we're gonna work our way into spoon corner. Now this is very tricky. I find it's so much trickier in these conditions. I don't know why, but the braking reference seems a little bit earlier. So normally I'd be braking closer to that gray bit of tarmac that you can see where the red line is. However, we're on the brakes very early and even then we miss the apex. You can see on the brakes early, and really you want to be getting this tire, left hand tire, close to that curb as possible. But you can see there's a bit of a gap there between the curb and my line. And that's because I've missed the apex slightly. And that's going to lose us a tenth or two because then we're struggling to get on the power as we push our way to the exit and onto this curb on the right hand side. As soon as you're on that curb on the right hand side, 
onto the brakes because this is where you're going to start doing a tiny bit of trail braking getting that car rotated into this corner getting the weight onto the front tires and that enables you to get on the power as early as you can so again trying to get that left hand tire as close to the curb as possible because the closer you are the earlier you get on the throttle and the more speed you take down this straight and again so much time to be gained if you get that right you can see i got it quite good on the exit and you can see the ghost behind me losing a bit of time but there's we're probably about two three attempts down on my optimal at this point but still not a bad lap it's not anything special but through this left hand corner you're going to see i take this a little bit cautious again what i do for this corner is as you chuck it into the left hand corner the 130r we're just lifting off the front and then back on the front now you can take 150 plus miles per hour through that corner. I dropped down to 147. But then into the next braking zone for the last chicane, almost in the middle of the 150 and the 100 board, you're going to get on the brakes, attacking that downshifting and down to second gear. And now again, just like GT Sport, you can be quite aggressive on these curves. Left hand, uh, sorry, the green bit of aster, you can get your right hand tire onto that. Just be careful you don't take too much off. And again, for this part, you can get your left hand tire onto the green aster again. And back, you can see off the throttle as we go onto it and then back onto it and exit speed all about getting the exit speed use first gear and over the line so you can actually attack the curbs quite aggressively just be cautious though because you can pick up a penalty doing that i go over the line for a one minute 57.9 it's about four attempts off what i think i should be getting i'm pretty sure with if i spent some time doing this we'd be in the 57.3 to 4 range but yeah i'm not a massive fan of this supra it feels very understeery but I won't be doing this race anyway, but I hope you lot really get to grips with this car. So let's have a little watch of the lap from the chase camera. You're going to see about using that full width for track. And again, trying to get the car into the apex. In the middle of the apex, will really gain you time on exit speed. It's all about using the full width for the track and using the curves. You can see, almost swinging the car in. We're exaggerating the steering movements to try and rotate this car in because it just feels so heavy. I'm not sure whether this is because of the physics change. Because I remember last time I drove this didn't quite feel like this i remember it being a bit better on handling it really feels a bit like a boat now but i'm sure you lot will have fun with this race in terms of strategy from what i can see with the settings it looks like a one stop now i'm not obviously going to be able to test this out but i do believe it looks like a simple one stop race 16 laps probably pit either lap seven or eight depending if you want to get an undercut you know if you pit lap seven you're going to get quite a big undercut because i think the tire is times five now medium tires on times five tire wear are going to be quite faded by lap seven so i don't think you're going to want to do two stops here because two stops will lose you such a huge time but one stop is probably going to be the one stop is going to be the way to do it i can't believe it'll be a no stop purely because i think the tires will be so dead after 12 laps with times five tire wear you're going to be losing five or six seconds a lap maybe but yeah just bear that in mind for the race that you know if you pit lap seven you're going to get a big undercut but then your tires are going to be nine laps old on the final lap so but your car will be lighter on fuel so factor that into your strategy decision whether you want to pit early or late you know maybe have better tires if you're stuck in traffic and you've got a big gap behind you maybe you could go to lap nine and then give yourself better tires to attack at the end of the race there's multiple decisions that you can make for this one but yeah it looks like a one-stop race from what i can see i'm you no know, double check it yourself but with the pit lane loss and doing that one stop but i can't believe a no stop will be the best way to do it but we'll wait and see i'll be what maybe watching some of the races when they take place on the weekend but yeah hope this is it hope this has helped you out do let me know in the comments hit that like button subscribe to the channel and i'll be back next week with more live streams i'll be just videos for this weekend thanks again everyone